Hey everyone. Now a number of years ago I made a video showing how a square wave is made up of lots of different harmonic frequencies. Uh, that video was a bit rough so I'm going to try and show that again in this video using some more modern tools and just sort of demonstrate how those harmonics can interfere with other frequencies. Okay, so this is GNU Radio Companion and basically I've got a whole bunch of different signal sources here getting mixed in so I can show the output. Okay, so here it is. I've got my fundamental frequency at 100 Hz and I've got some harmonics ready to go but they're not enabled yet. So here you can see the time sync which is basically an oscilloscope so you can see the wave and down here is the spectrum analyzer. So what I've got here is different colors for the different frequencies and the output is combined to be black. So what I'll do is I'll just take that output one off for the, for the moment and just actually I'll disable all of them except the one I'm looking at at the moment. So there's a 100 hertz one. Okay, so if I show you the 300 hertz one and enable that, what you'll see is it's doing, you'll probably all know, three times as many cycles in the same amount of time. You can see I've got its amplitude down a bit here. So if that was the same amplitude of 100, you can see the same sort of thing. So it goes boom, 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 three times. The key thing to note here is that it crosses zero in the same direction. So as it's, sorry, as the 100 hertz crosses zero, you'll see the other one is also crossing it at the same time. But if I put that back down to a third of the level, so 33 is what I had it. See, the first one's 100. What I want to see is what those two look like together. So if I show the combined signal, which is the black one here, you can see it's changed a bit. So basically what's happened is these two waves have added. So because those two are positive here, they'll add up and become even more positive. But remember this red one's the fundamental. As this second wave is coming down again, that'll pull some of this red down. So you can see that in the resultant wave there. So that's what's happening there. It's that red one's being modified by that brown one there a little bit. So if I then add the fifth harmonic, I'll just uh, make it clear so we can see what's going on. And then I add, I add the fifth harmonic there and show you it. Okay, this yellow one, a bit hard to see. You can see it's now doing five cycles in the time it takes this thing to do one, okay, as expected. But I've also got that as a fifth of the power. So where it was 100 before, now it's 20. So that and also the third harmonic, which if I enable that again, you can see these here. I've got the third harmonic at a third of the power, the fifth harmonic at a fifth of the power. And you can see them down here on the spectrum analyzer. Now if I show the output wave of that, you can see it's changing shape yet again. So if I take the fifth off, put it back on, you can see. Now as I add, oh, I'll just activate all of them. Just keep your eye on the black one here. As I activate the seventh harmonic, the ninth, the eleventh, the thirteenth, what you'll notice is this wave is becoming more square. It still crosses zero at the same point, which is the key, but you can see that all these frequencies change that to become more square. So you can see all the frequencies down here. But what that in turn tells you is that a square wave is made up of lots of sine waves of different frequencies. That's what makes up a square wave. So if you've got a square wave for any reason, you know it's made up of lots of different frequencies. And that's how it's done. All the odd harmonics with their power according, you can see I've got done here, turn a sine wave into a square wave. Now given that information, you can imagine what happens with an RF power amplifier, or any amplifier really, if they're going to distortion. Because you're probably aware that a normal sine wave, if you try and drive an amplifier too hard, it'll clip and you'll get a flatness at the top. With that flatness is a square wave essentially, which means you're introducing harmonics. So what I'm going to do now is show you the effect of that in an RF transmission. Okay, on the desk here I've got a Hack RF which is going to be doing the transmitting and over here I've got the antenna going into the RTL-SDR dongle which will be doing the receiving. So they're about a metre apart. Okay, now I've got an FM transmitter here set up on 433 just from the Hack RF. So you can see it there transmitting nicely. Now if I boost the alpha RF output up you can see it spills out all over the place. That's around this frequency of 433. But if I go to triple that frequency which is like 1299, so let's just go 1299 and see what happens there. There's nothing there, but if I set the power up a bit higher on the Hack RF, you can see it there and you can hear it just as well. So even though I'm supposedly transmitting that on 433, I've got it here at 1.3 gig. So that's obviously spilling out into a frequency that it wasn't supposed to be on. Now I've just muted that. But what that tells me is there's some sort of distortion between there and here. Now it could be that this was transmitting overdriven, so it could have been clipped on its RF output, 
or it could have been overdriving the receive end of this, which means it's distorting up here. I don't know at this point. All I know is that there's distortion in the system. Now what I'd like to do is put a filter on for those frequencies to see if it's overdriven on the receiver or if it was coming in in the first place. But I don't have the relevant frequencies. So what I've got is the next best option, which is a 30 dB attenuator. Just for the hell of it, I'm going to stick this on the RTL SDR receiver. So basically, in between the antenna and the receiver, that's a 30 dB attenuator, which is pretty substantial. So just put that on there. Now with that filter on, back on 433, at like max power that I'm putting out here, it doesn't look too bad around the other frequencies of it, but it's still up there, if I go back to it, you can still see it there. So, oh, signal's a bit low, but it is still coming through. So I'm gonna suggest that it's the RTL SDR, but I'm just saying I can't be 100% sure without some filtering and probing along the path. All I know is there's distortion somewhere in the system, which is creating this harmonic, on three times the frequency. Now those harmonics can be a problem in lots of different fields. Like for instance, electricity, if you've normally got 50 hertz, but if you've got some uh, problems with your system, you could be getting third order harmonics and be sending 150 hertz back into the power and then the power company will get upset with that. And another thing is with audio. Now, a lot of people are, I guess, familiar with audio. And if you've got your sine wave being driven by an amplifier and it's clipped because the amplifier can't actually deliver the power you want it to, when it's clipped, you've got DC there, which of course goes straight to your speaker and turns their coils into heaters. And here's an example of, of where that's happened in an old car of mine. Not necessarily that, it could have just been from years of having it cranked up, but uh, that's, that's the effect that you'll have is burnt out speaker coils. So that's why it's better to have a high power amplifier than a low one, because that way it's most likely not gonna get driven into distortion. Because as you saw, with distortion becomes clipping. With clipping comes DC for burning out speakers, or clipping also creates a square wave which creates harmonics and interferes with everyone else's frequency. So anyway, that video is just to update the old one and, and give you a, a bit better visualization of it. So that'll do for now. Till next time, take it easy. That bloody interference though, <laughs> it's everywhere. <laughs>